we are up to 22 episodes uh, of Jazzology on the uh, Savage Content platform. We're having a lot of fun with it. Which of the following Thelonious Monk competition finalists has a father who was also a Monk competition finalist? Would that be A, Gretchen Parlato, B, Joshua Ridman, C, Gerald Clayton, D, Sharonae Wade, or E, Melissa Aldana? Wow, I do not know. So this is gonna be a guess on my part. Uh, of course, Joshua Red's, Joshua's father is Dewey Redman. I don't believe he was a uh, monk in the monk competition. Uh, Gerald Clayton's father is John Clayton. I think he was a bit too uh, advanced in years to be in the competition. Uh, Melissa Aldana's father, Melissa is from Chile. Um, so there's a chance on that. I don't know Gretchen's father and I'm unfamiliar with Charlene Wade. So I'm gonna guess Melissa Aldana. And that is correct. I find the show to be number one, a lot of fun. I also find it uh, educational because there's a lot of information that I don't know. I've been a jazz person for years. Name the famous composer band leader who for a short time during the mid forties adopted the stage and recording name Baron in the spirit of the Duke of Ellington and the Count of Basie. Who was that band leader? Was it A, Charles Mingus, B, Gerald Wilson, C, Jimmy Lunsford, D, Max Roach, or E, Fletcher Henderson? Wow. Hmm. For some reason, I'm thinking Mingus. I'm going to go with A, Charles Mingus. And why are you thinking Mingus? For some reason, in my in the inner recesses of my memory, I have Baron and Mingus co-mingled. You are correct, Brett Premack. Do you write all the shows yourself? I do, and uh, I have I am I amassed a uh, loose leaf, a large loose leaf notebook full of uh, my jazzology questions down through the years when I was doing it on radio. And fortunately, I saved that. Uh, and so I, I call upon that as a resource in terms of the questions. But most of them are off the top. And, and they're, they're related to various readings. And you know things will come to me as I'm listening to something like, oh, OK, there's a question there. Why did so and so and so and so, or when did so and so and so and so do so and so and so and so, and who did they do it with, and those kinds of things. So they, the questions pop up constantly, and I keep a, a a jazzology quiz book handy right on my desk, and so a question might come to me at any time related to something I'm listening to, or something I'm reading, and so it 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 it, it kind of a the questions arise kind of organically. And, uh, you know, the difference between the web format that we have now and the old radio format is the fact that uh, all, of, all of the questions now on the uh, Savage Content version of Jazzology, all the questions are multiple choice. And I think multiple choice lends itself to kind of a fun factor, you know, when you have people ruminating over which of the multiple choices is the correct answer, as opposed to there being one, only one correct answer or only one possibility, and, and people ask answering a question that way, uh, or answering true or false or whatever that case. I think the whole aspect of multiple choice it, it 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 lends itself to 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 more of a, a collegial kind of exchange with the contestants and between the contestants. What country is Julieta Eugenio from? Is she from A, Chile? B, we we've ruled out Panama. C, 
Argentina, D, Uruguay, or E, Brazil? Well, I thinking along Mark's lines, I don't see her name as being Brazilian. Uh, Panama has been ruled out. Chile, I think of Melissa Aldana. I know that jazz is very popular in Argentina, so I'm going to go with C, Argentina. Brett, you are correct. You mm -hmm. are correct. Brett has stolen the point and stolen the lead. Julieta Eugenio is a tenor saxophonist who is a native of Argentina. And where do the contestants come from? I mean, yours truly, I've participated, but who are some of the other people in the world of jazz that have been on the show? Well, uh, of course, Howard Mandel was on the show. Uh, Ricky Ricciardi, who was the director of the Louis Armstrong uh, uh, house, uh, he was on the show. Brad Farberman, who was a, is a guitarist and a, and a, and a music critic, uh, he was on the show. Matt Merowitz, who is a jazz publicist, was on the show. And Drama de Toure, who is a radio personality at Sirius XM, and who also happens to be the daughter of Steve Toure and Akula Dixon, uh, she was on the show. The, 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 you know, those, those are some of the Joe Petricelli, who is the director of the Jazz Foundation of America. He was a, a, a longtime champion. And then, of course, there was yourself and, and, and others. It's, it's been a good experience. So we've come back to Brent at 7-7. Seven, seven. We got a little intrigue today. <laughs> but Brent... The late, great Philadelphia-born guitarist Pat Martino's biographer was which of the following jazz writers? Was it A, Gary Giddens, B, Gene Santoro, C, Mark Myers, D, Bill Milkowski, or E, Ashley Kahn? Well, last year, Bill Milkowski wrote a great book on Michael Brecker. And several years before that, he did one on Jaco Pastorius. Uh, so I'm going to go with D, Bill Milkowski. Brett, you are correct. It was indeed Bill Milkowski who wrote the Pat Martino biography. When is the show broadcast now? 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Savage Content web platform. And afterwards, it's made available on the Savage Content YouTube channel. So you can go to YouTube and do a search, put Jazzology in the search box, and all of the 22 episodes will come up eventually. And Are you ready, Mark? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mark, you don't sound very enthusiastic. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Mark Ruffin, before his stellar work as a jazz educator, composer, historian, author, and cellist, the late NEA jazz master David, Ber David Baker once excelled at which of the following instruments? Was it A, tenor saxophone, B, acoustic bass, C, trumpet, D, piano, or E, trombone? Wow. So, Brett, get ready next week uh, in two weeks because you're going to get all the really hard questions. <laughs> um, Man, I, again, just like last time, I, 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 I'm going to go with the bass. Uh, that is incorrect, Mark Ruffin. That is incorrect, and that means that Brett Premack is our new Jazzology champion. The correct answer to that question, and I'll, I'll, say repeat, trumpet. I'll repeat trombone. 
is the correct answer is trombone. Ah. What happened with David Baker is he had a terrible accident and he was unable to continue playing a wind instrument. So he concentrated on composing, educating, and he, he eventually picked up the cello as his means of expressive music. We need to, to, to say something about David Baker here because he's someone who's kind of behind the scenes. Musicians know about him, but he's had a major role in jazz education. Well, he did a major yeah. role in jazz education. And just a wonderful man. And if people are, if people see the show and they're interested in participating, how can they do that? There is a process that is uh, uh, meticulously explained during the uh, intro to the program. There's a process by way of the Savage Content website. In fact, if you went to the Savage Content website right now, uh, there would be information there for how to sign up to be a contestant on Jazzology. And, you know, we should stress there's a small, small cash prize every, every week of $100 for the winner. And uh, you sign up by way of the Savage Content website. And that's how we've got contestants is uh, people signing up. <laughs> and that, that part has been interesting as well because, uh, you know, on social media and in private conversations, etc., cetera, I've, I've done my part to try and encourage people to serve as contestants. Some people, I think some people feel a bit intimidated, maybe, you know, like, oh, I'm going to get on here and, and, and look like a fool because I'm not going to be able to answer anything. But then there, there are others who view it and recognize the fun factor and the fun aspect of it and the fact that, uh, you know, they're not necessarily competing against uh, jazz scholars, so to speak. I mean, we've had musicians, uh, Paul Carr, uh, tenor saxophonist in, 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 based in Maryland. Uh, he was one of the contestants. Ron Jackson, the guitar player who was based in Brooklyn, he was a contestant. So there have been musicians on there, but I think everyone comes into it on equal footing as far as the questions and the intellectual aspect of the program. So I don't think people should feel intimidated. But, you know, naturally in a format like that, where people feel like their knowledge is going to be called into a question, there are some people who feel who may feel a bit intimidated by that. But we try to make it fun. And the people who compete, like yourself, have all come away from the experience saying that, oh, I, I enjoyed that. I, I had some fun doing that. There's a lot of laughter and that kind of thing. So uh, I, I would... Please, I would urge people, please, not to feel intimidated by participating in this. Think of it as a, a fun aspect. And also, participating in jazzology can also be a promotional vehicle for, let's say, for artists who has a, who has a new record or something. We give them plenty of opportunity to talk about their new record and to talk about their exploits. Or say, for example, Paul Carr was a contestant on the last two episodes of jazzology. And you know, Brett, that Paul, in, in addition to uh, being a, a recording artist and a, a major educator around here in Maryland, Paul also produces the annual Mid-Atlantic Jazz Festival. So we gave Paul plenty of opportunity to talk about the upcoming Mid-Atlantic Jazz Festival. In fact, that was one reason why Paul uh, was able to compete these last couple of weeks, because we wanted to have him on prior to the Mid-Atlantic Jazz Festival so they could talk up the festival. So, so people should also look upon this as a promotional opportunity for their work. I would suggest everyone in the jazz community and those who are just getting into the jazz community to check out the show because it's fun, it's educational, and also it's a good way to learn more about jazz.